Who's on the Dapper Dividends Mount Rushmore? Stay tuned and find out. Hey, what's up? I'm Russ and this is Dapper Dividends where we are working to make work optional. And as always, we're doing this through stock and crypto passive income. Just got back from a really fun trip to Mount Rushmore, Deadwood, the Black Hills area. I uh, took an RV with the fam, with the in-laws. We drove over the course of a, more than a week, we drove almost 2,500 miles. I did the bulk of the driving, was happy to do it. Everyone got to relax and we're back at it. And I wanted to get in and get out this portfolio update to you. But first, who is on the Dapper Dividends Mount Rushmore? First up is Johnson & Johnson. Big blue chip company, one of the biggest and best, most solid companies in my opinion. They have been paying a dividend, growing dividend for 58 consecutive years. Next up, Procter & Gamble, ticker PG. Procter & Gamble has a huge moat, just like Johnson & Johnson. Consumer packaged goods, they give us the products that we use to live, uh, just like Johnson & Johnson does. By the way, Johnson & Johnson is involved in the medical devices, the pharmaceuticals, and they're also involved in consumer packaged goods, just like Procter & Gamble, which is why I love both of these companies. Procter & Gamble has been paying an increasing dividend for 64 years. Number three is 3M, ticker MMM. They have been paying a growing dividend for 62 years. The first three, they're all dividend kings, which is why I love them. They have such strong cash flows and such big moats. They have products that are all around us every day, which is why these companies are such great investments. And as Warren Buffett calls like the, the likes of Procter & Gamble equity bonds, just safe, solid and kind of boring companies. They're not sexy, they're not sleek, they're not like a Neo or a Tesla, but that's okay because I'm trying to do like Charlie Munger says to do and get rich slow. And number four on the Dapper Dividends Mount Rushmore is none other than PepsiCo, ticker PEP, which we did, spoiler alert, by our 57th share of this week as we have been doing for 57 weeks consecutively right now. PepsiCo has been paying that growing dividend for 49 years, one year away from becoming a dividend king. Can't wait for that to happen. So it's going to get there. So basically all four of these are dividend kings on the Dapper Dividends Mount Rushmore. Dividends received this week $9.24 from Leggett & Platt, ticker LEG. If you're not familiar with Leggett & Platt, they make cushions and bed springs, bed mattresses, just a variety of things, car cushions in the car. I say car seats, but that sounds like something you put a kid in. Uh, to the best of my knowledge, they don't make car seats, but they make the seats that go in cars. Leggett and Platt, going to have a part of this world for a long time. Received $5.30 from Federal Realty Trust, ticker FRT. Uh, Federal Realty Trust invests in shopping centers. So just think shopping centers in the Northeastern uh, region, the Mid-Atlantic, California. So they have several areas throughout the country that they invest in. Just a REIT that I love investing in, don't have a big position in, but as you can see, just enough to get me over $5 every 90 days. $2.58 from MGM Growth Properties, ticker MGP. So we did a video on how to invest in Vegas. When I went to Vegas with the family last year is when I bought into MGP while we were at the famous New York, New York Hotel and Casino. If you're not familiar, again, and aware, MGP is basically the landlord, but MGM is the tenant that's on the space. They split and MGP, they own the property that MGM and the likes operate inside of. Received $15.31 from O, Realty Income, the big O, ticker symbol O, Realty Income. I've covered them a lot on the program. A uh, lot that is going on with Realty Income. They have a merger and a spinoff 
coming up with Verit. They're going to merge with Verit and then they're going to spin off basically all their uh, non-core assets, which are the office properties, because they want to get out of the office space, which is a very small uh, segment of their portfolio. So Realty Income, love them. They are the monthly dividend income uh, company. And speaking of monthly dividend paying companies, we received 85 cents from STAG, ticker STAG. You know, I want to say something about only 85 cents. You know, this is not world beating, but that's money coming in every single month. And every dollar of passive income that you have coming in per year is one more dollar to bring you closer to that goal of work becoming optional. So I love them all. I love every penny of passive income that comes in. I don't sneeze at any of them, and I only look to grow and build on top of those. So we did receive 85 cents from Stag. They are single tenant acquisition group. They acquire single tenant properties. Uh, did a video all about Stag right here, or is it here? I don't know, one of these ways, check it, click the link if you want to learn all about Stag. You know, it's funny, just coming from the Black Hills area, there was a huge gold rush there in 1849 in California, and then they discovered gold in the Black Hills in the 1860s, 1870s, and a lot of people went there. A lot of people lost everything they had to get out there and try to uh, mine and pan for gold and mine gold and get gold. And this next company we received $8.40 from, IIPR, Innovative Industrial Properties. That's another REIT. So three REITs in a row, we got money from it. And by the way, I like to hold the REITs inside of a tax advantaged account because REIT income is a non-qualified dividend, meaning that you're going to pay your ordinary income tax rate on so you get no favors or breaks from the government. So it just makes sense if you have the option, and it's an easy option, to hold your REITs inside of a tax-advantaged account. So IIPR, basically, in a nutshell, they are the buildings. They create the space for marijuana growers. And I link it, link... <laughs> And I liken this to the gold rush because they're creating the space that the growers are going to operate inside of. So in a way, they're the picks and shovels for the gold rush miners, for the gold rush crowd. They don't have to determine which uh, hill or area is going to have gold. They're just selling the space, leasing out the space for the cannabis to be grown in. And last, just like every week, the weekly dividend uh, ticker WKLY, the SoFi weekly dividend ETF. We only have five shares of that and we get 10 cents every Thursday. Uh, did a video breaking down weekly right here. Check it if you want to here. I know it's here. So <laughs> check out the SoFi weekly dividend ETF video we did. Uh, they have a smattering of companies, actually a, a lot of companies that are inside of that ETF and they're paying dividends every Thursday, once a week. So far, so good. Price has pretty much been steady. And I'm not a big ETF guy because of the expense ratios, but if you're a hands-off investor and you would like to get money every single week, then definitely take a look at the SoFi Weekly Dividend ETF. All in all, received $41.78 of dividend income this week. How cool is that? I had a pretty hands-off and away week. There was periods where I went hours without a cell phone signal. Crazy, I know, up in the mountains in the Black Hills. Just like that, we had $41.78 passively come to us that, you know, we already did the work for those dollars. We worked hard for those dollars and we invested them. We put those dollars to work. Some of those dollars we earned that we worked hard for. Now they're working hard for us and they brought us $41.78 back in completely passive dividend income just this week. And because it was a week with family and I had bad cell phone reception, sometimes none at all, but you know, it was well worth it going hiking in the mountains with family. That paid some fantastic dividends that the memory I have will, will keep going for years and years to come. So I bought our 57th share of Pepsi, ticker PEP, at $155.50 for a 2.77% starting yield on that share. And that added $4.30 of dividend income to the portfolio. 
Pepsi, unfortunately, the problem that us dividend growth investors have is they knocked their earnings out of the park. They had some really good numbers looking at, I believe, 6% organic revenue growth, which is just really good from a big blue chipper. And if they can keep numbers like that up, I always say it and I'll keep saying it, invest in companies that are bringing back really good returns on their invested capital, return on their assets. And if they're increasing their earnings per share consistently over time, the stock price will follow and keep going up. It's, it's a no brainer. It's just a matter of time. Good earnings per share that are constantly growing and you're gonna get money, capital appreciation on top of growing dividends like Pepsi is doing in one more year and they become that dividend king. And then I had some, I call it pocket change left over in our bridge account, which this is all in by the way. Bought one share of AT&T at $28.45, which is a starting yield of 7.31%. Now this is going to be reduced after they uh, spin off the new Discovery Warner asset, whatever they're going to call it, that we'll be getting shares of, as I understand it, as things are right now. We'll be getting shares in that company. And I've covered this ad nauseum about why I love the merger and the spinoff, because it's going to allow AT&T to focus on being a telecom giant and not having to worry about running a media streaming entity. But on that other hand, Discovery is a juggernaut in the space and also Warner Media. So when you combine the largely uh, nonfiction Discovery with the mostly uh, fiction oriented Warner, I think it's going to be a great powerful entity that is going to take on the likes of Netflix. And I think it's just a matter of time before people realize just how strong this company is going to be. So I am getting in early. Again, not financial advice, just the opinion on what we're doing around these parts. That added $2.08 of current dividend income. Again, this is supposed to go into effect and close. Uh, it's still proposed. It's not finalized in mid 2022 next year. Depending on when you're watching this, it may already have been done. And then lastly, one share of the Mighty Mo, ticker MO, Altria Group. We bought one share at $47.50 for a starting yield of 7.24%. Now that added $3.44 of dividend income to the portfolio. What can you say about, about Altria? They're a cash machine. Uh, they're involved in cannabis, in tobacco, obviously. Uh, they own a 10% stake in Budweiser. So they are just a behemoth of a sin stock. And for that reason, a lot of people don't like to invest in Altria, which is perfectly okay because as we say on the channel, personal finance, it's personal. And if you're not comfortable with it, don't in invest in it. But we like making money. And we also believe that people, human beings have been using tobacco products and people have been wanting to alter their state of consciousness for thousands of years. So companies like Altria allow that to happen in a quality controlled environment. And you know what you're getting, you know what you're putting into your body, which there's plenty of debate to be said for that. Uh, we don't smoke. I would not recommend you smoking or using tobacco, but if you do, at least you know the risks and you know exactly what you're putting in your body. And for that, we have a place in our portfolio for Altria. We added $9.82 of current passive income annually to the portfolios. We love that. This is what it's all about. That's $9.82 of passive income that we don't have to work for currently as things stand anymore. And that's what it's all about. You have to have a goal because a goal without a plan that's not written down is just a wish. And if you have a handful of wishes, you know what you got. So check out this video we did on Stag. If you missed it earlier in the video, go there, watch the video about Stag, and I will talk to you there.